Once hailed as Boeing's greatest achievement, the 787 Dreamliner promised to revolutionize long-haul travel with its groundbreaking efficiency, comfort, and range. Not to be outdone, Airbus soon answered with the A350, a sleek, ultra-efficient jet featuring an extra-wide body design, quiet cabin, and outstanding performance on the world's longest routes. Both carbon fiber aircraft embodied the future lighter, cleaner, and far more comfortable for passengers. Yet something unexpected is happening. Airlines that once stood firmly behind Boeing are now turning to its European rival placing record-breaking orders for the Airbus A350 instead of the Dreamliner. What changed? Why has the A350 emerged as the new favorite for the next generation of global air travel? Let's find out. At the dawn of the 2000s, the global aviation industry stood at a historic crossroads. The relentless rise in fuel prices coupled with increasingly strict environmental regulations has rendered traditional business models less efficient, forcing airlines to seek drastic cost-cutting measures. The golden era of ultra-large aircraft such as the Boeing 747 and Airbus A380, once icons of power and luxury began to outdate. Instead of filling hundreds of seats on major hub routes, the new priority became flexibility, absolute fuel efficiency, and the ability to fly non-stop between secondary cities through point-to-point -point routes. In this period of transition, Boeing unveiled a bold and ambitious vision, one that promised to completely redefine how the world connects the 787 Dreamliner. This wasn't just another airplane. It was a technological revolution designed to free airlines from dependence on major hubs, enabling them to operate direct flights between smaller cities such as Osaka to San Diego or Boston to Tokyo. To achieve this leap forward, the 787 Dreamliner became the first commercial aircraft built primarily from lightweight carbon fiber composite materials instead of traditional aluminum. This shift not only promised significant fuel savings but also offered passengers a superior experience, smoother flights, higher cabin humidity to reduce jet lag, and larger dimmable windows controlled at the touch of a button. The Dreamliner exuded quietness, elegance, and a distinctly futuristic aura. And indeed, Boeing's gamble paid off with over two 200 orders, the Dreamliner became one of the most popular and beloved wide-body aircraft ever built. For Boeing, this aircraft was more than just a new commercial product. It was an epic tale of redemption. A chance for the company to reaffirm its legendary reputation as an industry pioneer after years of being seen as stagnant. For passengers, the Dreamliner offered a glimpse into tomorrow, a new standard of flight experience. For airlines, it was a firm promise of profit and dominance on long-haul routes. The Dreamliner's promise of breakthrough profitability and unprecedented efficiency created an irresistible allure for airlines around the world. Indeed, Japan's ANA proudly became the launch operator, paving the way for a wave of massive orders from Qatar Airways, United British Airways, and dozens of other major carriers all eager to claim their share of the future. However, the world soon came to realize a bitter truth even the most celebrated masterpieces can conceal deadly flaws. And for the Dreamliner, those flaws were all too real, both technical and reputational. What began as Boeing's boldest and most ambitious vision quickly spiraled into one of the most expensive nightmares in the company's history. In its quest to revolutionize air travel while cutting production costs, Boeing made a fateful and risky decision to minimize in-house manufacturing, retain only final assembly, and massively expand outsourcing. Nearly 70% of the Dreamliner's structure was handed over to a vast global network of suppliers, a supply chain model described as a labyrinth unprecedented in commercial aviation. On paper, it sounded perfect, a global manufacturing symphony with wings built in Japan, fuselage sections in Italy, and the tail shipped from South Carolina. But in reality, it became an uncontrollable logistical chaos. Parts from different suppliers didn't fit together properly, a fundamental problem for an aircraft. Entire fuselage sections often arrived at Boeing's final assembly line unfinished, or with serious defects forcing engineers to rework components that were supposed to be flight-ready. Delays piled up relentlessly from months to years, sending project costs skyrocketing beyond control with billions of dollars in overruns. The Dreamliner, once promoted as an elegant and efficient solution, had turned into a logistical nightmare and a symbol of excessive complexity. And when the aircraft finally entered commercial service in 2011, another crisis erupted. Alarming reports of overheating lithium-ion batteries began to surface, culminating in severe onboard fire incidents involving aircraft parked in Boston and Japan. The situation escalated to such a degree that aviation regulators worldwide took an unprecedented step not seen since the 1970s, grounding the entire 787 fleet in January 2013. For Boeing, it was a devastating and very public blow to its reputation. The aircraft meant to define the future had instead become a textbook example of ambition colliding disastrously with execution.
Although the U.S. maker eventually resolved the core issues allowing the Dreamliner to recover sell thousands of units and become a mainstay of modern fleets, the scars left by those crises and delays remain permanent. Airlines vividly remember the technical troubles, the instability in the production line that dragged on for nearly two years, the unfulfilled promises and the endless delivery delays, all of which created a massive trust gap that Rival would later exploit to its full advantage. And now it's time for payback. While Boeing was struggling through a prolonged crisis of reputation and engineering, battling to repair both literal and figurative scars, a quiet but decisive shift was taking place across the Atlantic. In Toulouse, France, Airbus had been quietly preparing driven by an ambition not merely to compete, but to redefine what a truly modern long-haul aircraft should be. At first, when Boeing unveiled the Dreamliner Airbus responded with a mix of complacency and even mockery. In the details, their initial reaction was to propose a stopgap solution, essentially an upgraded version of the aging A330 fitted with new engines and minor aerodynamic tweaks. The goal was to reassure airlines that Airbus could stay competitive without investing billions to design a completely new jet. However, the market wasn't so easily convinced. Airlines looked at the Dreamliner, a pioneering aircraft built largely from composite materials and packed with cutting-edge technology, and then looked at the European maker's modest upgrade proposal. Key customers like Emirates and Singapore Airlines flatly rejected it as uninspired and unworthy of serious investment. As a result, Airbus soon found itself in a dilemma, preserve the old and safe or take the bold leap into something revolutionary. With no other viable option, the company scrapped its half measures in 2006 and returned to the drawing board determined to start from scratch. What emerged from that decision was one of the most advanced aircraft ever built, the A350 XWB short for extra wide body. The XWB label was far from a marketing gimmick. The A350 was physically wider than its American rival, giving airlines and passengers more room to work with. Notably, the maker committed to maintaining a minimum seat width of 18 inches in economy class, a powerful selling point for long-haul comfort. The extra width also enabled airlines to offer greater cabin flexibility from high-density economy layouts to spacious first- and business-class suites. More importantly, the maker learned from its rivals' painful missteps. Instead of scattering work among dozens of independent suppliers, which had led to chaos for the Dreamliner Airbus, kept the project tightly centralized. All core design complex system integration and final assembly were carried out at its Toulouse headquarters under a single unified management structure, giving the company near total control over its supply chain. The contrast in manufacturing philosophy was both immediate and unmistakable. While Boeing's Dreamliner program sank under miscommunication costly delays and production errors, the U.S. manufacturer's XWB development proceeded with discipline synchronization and remarkably a level of smoothness rarely seen in any wide-body aircraft program. By the time the first A350 took to the skies in 2013, it was a clear and decisive triumph. The European maker had not only caught up, it had learned, adapted, and arguably surpassed its greatest rival, regaining the upper hand in trust and reliability. The battle for the skies was no longer just about how many planes each side could sell, but about who could build the aircraft truly suited for the future, one defined by precision stability and the confidence passengers and airlines alike could feel the moment they experienced it. When the A350XWB entered service with Qatar Airways in early 2015, it wasn't just an incremental upgrade, it was a triumphant statement of passenger experience. Travelers immediately noticed the difference, the A350's cabin was exceptionally quiet, even quieter than its rival. The air felt fresher, the humidity higher, and the lighting more natural, all deliberately designed to minimize jet lag and make long-haul travel more human. Notably, the defining factor was size. The name Extra Wide Body wasn't just marketing flair. The A350 is physically wider than the 787, allowing Airbus to guarantee an 18-inch minimum seat width in economy class, a powerful selling point on ultra-long-haul flights. That extra space also gave airlines greater cabin flexibility from high-density layouts to luxurious first- and business suites. Beneath the comfort, however, lay calculated design genius aimed at maximizing profit. The aircraft was built for the ultra-long-range era, easily handling ambitious routes like Qantas's Project Sunrise non-stop from Sydney to London. In both performance and profitability, it matched or exceeded most 787 variants while carrying more passengers and offering better fuel efficiency per seat. Much of this came from its Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engines, the most efficient large turbofans ever built, burning up to 25% less fuel than older aircraft. For airlines, that meant one thing higher margins. 
Moreover, Airbus had learned from decades of operational headaches and designed the A350 for simplicity in management and maintenance. The 900 and 1000 variants shared the same cockpit layout and nearly 70% of parts allowing dual-type pilot certification and interchangeable spares saving airlines millions annually in logistics training and upkeep. It was a masterstroke in design philosophy, redefining what modern long-haul flying could mean. This technical and experiential superiority was only reinforced by Boeing's ongoing instability. What began as Boeing's boldest vision soon spiraled into one of its costliest nightmares, with excessive outsourcing causing logistical chaos and the lithium-ion battery failures grounding the entire fleet. Though the Dreamliner eventually recovered, troubles persisted. The 737 MAX crisis in 2019 and later production flaws on the 787 halted Dreamliner deliveries for nearly two years. Meanwhile, the European maker maintained steady A350 deliveries throughout that same period. In aviation, reliability is everything, and the contrast between crisis and consistency sent a clear message to the market Airbus was the safer, more dependable bet. That trust only deepened during the COVID-19 pandemic when the A350 proved remarkably efficient, capable of running profitable long-haul routes, even with reduced passenger loads, something larger aircraft couldn't manage easily. As a result, more major airlines from Lufthansa to Singapore Airlines to Air France began prioritizing the A350 for their newest long-haul services. Today, the XWB aircraft dominates the ultra-long-range segment, the most profitable market of all. The Dreamliner, while still an excellent aircraft, is beginning to feel smaller and more limited on the world's longest routes. Meanwhile, airlines face new sustainability pressures, and here too, the A350 has the edge, its fuel-sipping Trent XWB engines meet the growing need to balance comfort with environmental responsibility. Don't stop there. Airbus continues to expand the A350 platform with the new A350F freighter, further cementing its position as a next-generation technological ecosystem. The rivalry isn't over, but Airbus's advantage is widening not only in technology but in market perception and trust. The European maker didn't win with a single headline innovation, but through hundreds of consistent incremental advantages in efficiency cost and reliability enough to make even American carriers as Delta United and American rethink their fleet strategies. The Dreamliner forever changed aviation, but the A350 perfected the formula. It's quieter, roomier, and more efficient proof that patience, precision, and trust can sometimes fly farther than boldness alone. Perhaps this will forever remain an open-ended debate, but here's the question for you. Which aircraft do you think offers the more comfortable experience, the A350 or the Dreamliner? Thank you for joining us today, and as always, we wish you safe and enjoyable flight.